So let's start with that verse, then all the way to verse 14. Let's, let's read all together. Let's read all together verse 12 to 14. Ready? Read. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, what delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Let's pray. Thank you, dear Lord, sa inyong goodness sa amin ngayon. Lord, salamat sa wonderful feeling na nasa aming mga puso ngayon. Yung blessings, Lord, na aming na-experience today na makita ang bawat isa. Matagal na naming hindi nakita, Lord, totoo po yung kapangyarihan po ng encouragement na makasama ang inyo pong mga tao. Panginoon, salamat sa pagkakataon na ito sa binigay niyo sa people for His name, Baptist Church. Na once again, Lord, after a long time na ma-enjoy muli namin, hindi lang po ang inyong salita but at ang bawat isa po, Panginoon, in real fellowship. At salamat sa, sa consolations po na ito. At ngayong umaga, Panginoon, ay kami ay lumalapit sa inyo na ikaw po ay mag-bless po sa aming preaching service. Sana ikaw patuloy, Lord, mangusap sa amin sa pamamagitan ng salita. Sana, Panginoon, magkano, magkaroon ng tunay na impact ang salita ninyo sa aming mga buhay. Sana magkaroon po, mag, ma, makita po namin ang direksyon at ang inyong point, Lord, sa mga katotohanan na ito. Sana hindi namin ma-miss, Lord, kung ano yung gusto ninyong ipaabot po sa amin. So, Lord, help us to listen intently. Help us, Lord, to to have our our attention sa bawat punto, sa bawat uh, uh, bawat katotohanan na amin mapakinggan ngayon. At hayaan mo, Lord, at tulungan nyo kami. At ang hayaan mo ang inyong Holy Spirit na mag-freely work sa aming, sa aming mga puso at isipan. At tulungan nyo din kami, Panginoon, na mag-yield completely, Lord, sa inyo pong leading. And Lord, kung whatever things na amin mang makukuha at matutunan ngayon, Lord, may it be that Jesus Christ will receive all the glory and the preeminence and the honor and the adoration. And this we ask in His name. Amen. May take your seat. Thank you very much, brethren. Thank you. Salamat po sa... Salamat po sa umagang ito na pinagkaloob po ng Panginoon po sa atin. Now, this morning, I, we will be dealing on the forgiveness of sins. Because we talk about verse number 14, yung first part, in whom we have redemption through His blood. We talk about that lengthily last Sunday afternoon and uh, redemption through His blood. And this morning, we will talk about even the forgiveness of sins. Again, I told you over and over po mga kapatid that we don't uh, formulate our own practice, our own manner of life on how we should serve God. But rather, lahat ng mga practical aspect ng ating Christian life is taken from these doctrines. Okay? Taken from this truth. And uh, meron ding practical side sa lahat ng mga bagay po na ito. But I'd like you to focus your attention on that part, even the forgiveness of sins. So, yung appreciation natin sa katotohanan na ito ay nakasalalay ulit sa ating understanding. And many many of us po mga kapatid ay pwede nating masabi, I know that my sins are forgiven, pero ang ating appreciation is not due to the reality and the, the gravity and the greatness sa sense kung ano ba talaga ang ang ibig sabihin ng isang tao na napatawad ang kasalanan kaya that's why our joy our excitement is not proportion amen to the truth na ginawa ng Panginoon sa atin and it is evident sa buhay po natin it is evident in our Christian life that we are not excited about forgiveness, about redemption, about the many things that the Lord has done for us, mga kapatid. And there are several factors why. And I believe, isa po sa pinakaunang factor kung bakit hindi tayo na-move at na-steer ang ating heart sa mga precious truths na ito na ginawa po ng Panginoon, it's because we lack understanding. That's why we lack appreciation. We don't appropriate it properly po, mga kapatid, dahil wala. Ikaw, pag ikaw po ay naintindihan 
ang value ng diamond at nabigyan ka ng isang kilong diamond. Siguro kung kung naintindihan mo yon at kung ang mindset mo ay di, na, nakuha mo yon at yun ang riches mo, I don't think mga kapatid na ang reaction mo ay baka kung kung ngingiti ka brother Johnny baka ma, ma, mapuri. <laughs> Ang iba, nalaman nila na nanalo sila sa loto ay talagang dapat sikreto lang para hindi sila ma-hold up pero hindi mapigilan. Ang salamat nila ay napaka-sobra kasi because they understand the value. Amen. The same true na na kung kaya nga sabi ni Brother Gideon kanina, sabi niya when he heard about that song about his my king then he asked, so what is it to me? Amen. So we have to meditate and search and ponder. Amen. The, the real sense and value of what it means that Christ to be our head and king and Lord. So that we could, we could appropriate with a proper uh, response. Amen. To that, to that pressure po mga kapatid. Of course, the same true when we talk about redemption, when we talk about the forgiveness of sins, at ang atin pong kasiyahan, yan, katay na yan, bro. Kasi may rule tayo dito. Brother Eric, may rule na pagpapasok dito, patay. Sa pari na daw. Pagpapasok sa tabernacle, sa pari na daw yan. Yon. <laughs> okay. Ay, okay. Sa pari pala yan. So, wala magagawang pari kundi katayin. Amen. So, sorry ha, sa interruption, ito lang, y- y- yun ang mamimiss nyo, hindi nyo makitang manok. <laughs> Amen. So, going back, so even the forgiveness of sins, this verse, this phrase over here, and even this text po mga kabatid, explains how God the Father is able to make us partakers, it explain how God is righteous and and righteous and just to make us ano po mga kabatid, make us meet to be partakers. We are undeserving. We could not think. We could not fathom of anything. Why? How could God made me meet to be partakers of the inheritance? Well, I am undone. I am unclean. I have nothing. I am nobody, and I am. I am an enemy, I am sinful, I am a sinner, and all of my life is displeasing okay, to God. And this provides us a very strong reason why could God, amen, made you become partakers, made us, made partakers of the inheritance, amen. And how could God deliver us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, po mga kabatid, and this is the reason why. Amen. So in, because in Jesus Christ, we have redemption through His blood and we are the possessor of the forgiveness of sins. Remember, God would be violating Himself, amen, if He will, he will make you partakers and deliver you and translate you with your sins unforgiven, with your sins being not redeemed. Because he would be end up compromising himself. But to do that so that God would be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Amen. There must be reconciliation. There must be forgiveness. There must be redemption. Amen. Amen. Through his blood. Then, then and then God is free. Amen. To do whatever he wants without compromising himself or violating himself he is now free amen to bless you free amen to give you all the abundance because the sin issue has been settled amen this is the reason po mga kapatid kaya ito yung pundasyon as we discuss uh, uh, last sunday the foundation ng lahat ng blessings na tanggap po natin amen so the word forgive is a grace word. When I say a grace word, it, it, it is a gracious word 
it is a gracious word, a gracious description of a word. Merong mga grace word na sinasabi natin like love, like mercy, like loving kindness, like forbearance, long suffering. Those are grace words. And include that includes forgiveness. So an early meaning in English of the word forgiveness is to give or to grant. It, it, it means to give, kaya forgive, to give, or to grant something. Then later on po mga kabatid, with the further revelation sa Bible, it means to, makikita po natin, it means to remit a debt. Amen. Or to give up resentment, or claim for requital, or to pardon an offense. Another thing is to pardon an offender or to overlook an offense. Now think of this, to overlook of an offense. How could God overlook an offense, mga kabatid, without paying it? So redemption and forgiveness of sin, they go together. There is forgiveness because of redemption. Remember that part po mga kabatid, being justified by grace. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That is to say, God could not just justify you, amen, as long as He want, without appeasing Himself, without satisfying Himself. So there must be first redemption, there must be first propitiation. Then and then, God is free, amen, to do that to any man, po mga kapatid. So, it, it, in 2 Corinthians 5, by the way, it also means remission of sin. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19, makikita mo yung word doon, not imputing. Their trespasses is also in a sense of forgiveness when God will not impute, amen, our trespasses. Okay? Or it removes the debt and threats the offender as not guilty. Okay? So, mga kabatid, although, I don't know, Brother Magno, is forgiveness a legal term? Hindi siya legal term. But this is more of a personal, okay, uh, disposition ng isang tao na makikita po natin po, mga kabatid. So, we all know. So, when we talk about forgiveness, it talks about debtors or being debtors. We are indebted. Kaya nga sabi dun, forgive us with our debtors. Okay? Uh, forgive us with our debts. Amen. So forgive us with our debts. So we, ha we are indebted because we are sinners and we are all de de debtors. We are maybe debtors to one another or to others or debtors to the whole society as a whole. And above all po mga kabatid, we are debtors to God because we are sinners. Amen. So, now, also, on the other hand, we often feel that people owe us many, many things in our human relationship. And sa sometimes, magtatampo tayo dahil maybe hindi ka napansin, hindi ka nakausap, or we feel sometimes that people owe us something and we owe them something. Kaya, maintindihan natin tong terminology po na ito po mga kapatid, whether we owe them an apology or they owe us an apology or we owe them of something na hindi natin nagawa para sa kanila or they owe us of something na hindi nila nagawa para sa atin. Either ways po mga kapatid, we are all debtors. Amen. So, we feel we, we are owed courtesy and consideration or, or many things po mga kapatid. Now, let me, let me, tell you some, some situation and some stories kung saan po mga kabatid that they have their own concept of what man has his own concept of what forgiveness is. So there's a man po mga kabatid who trusted Christ as his only Savior and he was rejoicing and was rejoicing po mga kabatid on that knowledge that his sins are forgiven. Okay? So of course, sino bang hindi matuwa lalo na isa sa mga natutunan natin nung tayo ay naligtas, ay napatawad ang ating mga kasalanan, it brought always rejoicing na malaman na in spite of what we have done, amen, God has 
canceled and forgiven us our sins through the blood of His cross. Amen. So, with that regard, however, later on his Christian life, po mga kabatid, he become conscious of his sin. Na as if na bumabalik yung dati niyang mga kasalanan. Na, na, na una, nung naligtas siya, excited siya sa forgiveness ng Panginoon. Pero rea when reality starts to sink in, nung namuhay siya sa kanyang Christian life, okay, nararamdaman niya na parang bumabalik siya sa kanyang mga kasalanan and fears hunted him. Ano yung fear niya? That he's thinking that God is still angry. Amen. And that God is torturing his conscience. And there, later, he wonders if God still accepts him. So, that is his view of forgiveness. Of course, we know it's wrong. We know it's not the forgiveness na sinabi po ng Biblia. Pero may mga ganong kristyano pag makagawa sila ng kasalanan, na ano kayang nangyayari, ano kayang thinking ng Panginoon sa akin? Baka hindi na ako tatanggapin ng Panginoon. Amen. So another, also a housewife, has a husband who is an alcoholic. Okay? One morning, he came home drunk. Okay? Na daladala niya ang kanyang sasakyan na nakyupi na. Sira na po mga kapatid. So, he is sorry about it. But, but she knows, yung babae, if she forgives him, he will just do it again. So, may ganun ding konsepto ang mga tao na kung papatawarin ko siya, uulitin lang din niya. So, ang tingin nila sa forgiveness is condoning. Okay? Paano siya matututo kung papatawarin ko siya? So, mayroon ding ganun konsepto. Another po mga kabatid, my old woman sits alone in a large empty house and years ago, her family hurt her very deeply. Okay? At one time, she wanted to forgive sa kanya pong nag-hurt sa kanya, sa kanya mga pamilya. And, uh, but they have never acknowledged that the offense ever took place. Yun po yung kanyang konsepto. Then, she said, how could they have done such a thing? She asked. Now, she awaits death and deliverance from the bitterness and disillusionment that binds her. So, yun ang problema po, mga kabatid. Sometimes, hindi tayo nakapagpatawad dahil hindi naman nila in-acknowledge nila ang kanilang faults. So, may mga konsepto din na ganun. So, that is to say po, mga kabatid, these examples are more than just hypothetical. This, more, this is more than just situational. But, mga kabatid, we know po, mga kabatid, we know that there are countless similar cases na, na mga tao ngayon na ganun ang konsepto nila sa forgiveness. Kaya when they, when they know that God has forgiven them, it would affect also their joy kasi meron silang ibang konsepto kung anong forgiveness rather than kung anong sinabi ng Biblia about sa forgiveness and how God has forgiven us all po mga kapatid. And do not nakikita sa bawat simbahan sa bawat tahanan po mga kapatid, this concept of forgiveness have hunted them down. And I believe also po mga kapatid, isa sa mga reasons kung bakit po hindi natin na-appreciate in real sense yung forgiveness na binigay ng Panginoon sa atin, it's because we have also our own concept of what is forgiveness po mga kapatid. So, uh, my, my, there are questions that does Christianity have the answer on what is forgiveness? It depends po mga kapatid kung sino yung Christian na yun. Kasi ang mga Kristiyano din, meron din silang ibang mga konsepto. At depende yun kung anong klaseng Christianity. Kasi maraming mga Christian churches din na meron din silang sarili nilang concept on what is forgiveness. So the problem with forgiveness of... A, na-mention ko kanina po mga kabatid, sa lahat ng na-mention ko kanina, it is forgiveness without atonement. Yun ang problema eh. 
It is forgiveness without atonement. Pero ang forgiveness natin po mga kapatid, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. To God po mga kapatid, to God, forgiveness without atonement is unjust. Hello? It is a violation to who He is. It is a violation to His righteousness and holiness po mga kapatid. That's why you could never find forgiveness without atonement. Even in the Old Testament, God could not just say, Oh, because I desire to forgive you, okay, I'll just condone you. I will just, anong sabi dito? I will just, uh, yung definition natin kanina po mga kapatid, I will just overlook your offense. That's not the Bible's forgiveness. That's not the way God forgive others. There must be an atonement. There must be a token, a shed blood. Amen. There must be a propitiation to appease Him. Amen. To satisfy His holy demands. And then we learn, without this, this is wickedness. Forgiveness without atonement is wickedness. Are you listening? It is unjust. Amen. Yun po yun, that's why wala silang proper na foundation. That's why they question God, are they still forgiven? When they magkamali sila sa kanilang Christian life, they wonder if they are still forgiven po mga kapatid. Now, the question is, can we forgive if someone is not sorry? Hello? How could God forgive somebody if he is not sorry? Is that would that be possible? The answer is yes. Amen. Do you not know that forgiveness of sin was made available even before you feel sorry of your sins? Amen. It is possible po mga kapatid only if we take the wrong. We could forgive someone only if we take the wrong. If there is the removal of the faults, if there is the removal of the sin and the wrong, then forgiveness is possible. Even if they are not made sorry po mga kapatid. Anong sabi po ng Colossians chapter number 3? Let's look at Colossians chapter number 3. Is that possible? Yes, it is possible to God. Amen. You know why we could not forgive Mamaya po mga kapatid, because there's practical light on this. You know why we cannot forgive? Because we always see their sins. We always see their faults. There is no remission or remittance. There is no cancellation. There is no atonement or removal. That's why we cannot forgive. Kaya kung you attempt to forgive someone po mga kapatid, without Atonement or removal of anything po dyan po mga kapatid, yung sin, paulit-ulit lang. Wala kang talagang, talagang permanent na forgiveness. Paulit-ulit lang yun. Bakit? Yung sin will always remind you. Amen. But you can forgive someone even if they're not sorry. Amen. If there is the removal of that sin po mga kapatid, and that's what God did. God is free to forgive you. God is free to forgive us forever. Why? There was also a, a forever disposal of all our sins. Amen. By the blood of His cross. Ano sabi po dito sa Colossians chapter number 3? I would like you to look at Colossians 3 verse number 13. Look at verse 13. And you, okay, being dead in your sins, and an uncircumcision of your flesh, had quickened together with Him, and look at that word, having forgiven you all trespasses, having forgiven you all trespasses, and how could, what, okay, anong nagbibigay ng kapangyarihan sa, ng Diyos na kaya kanyang patawarin sa lahat ng trespasses? Anong nagbibigay ng kapangyarihan ng Panginoon na kaya tayong patawarin ng lahat ng ating mga kasalanan? Verse number 14. Blotting out 
the handwritings of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, and nailing it to His cross. How could God forgive you and me? Because He took out of the way that barrier to forgiveness. Amen. So can, can you forgive someone without being sorry, made sorry? God did forgive you. You are not saved because you are made sorry for your sins. You are saved because you believe the blood of His cross. You are saved because you believe you trusted that all-sufficient finished work of Christ. Amen. And God forgive you on the merits of what Christ had done for us. Because He took it out of the way. Is there anything, mga kabatid, that God could hinder or could hinder God not to forgive you? There is none. Because He took it out of the way. Amen. But God, nevertheless, why is not all, the application of forgiveness is not applied to all men? It was just made available because not all believe. Because it was preconditioned by faith. Amen. And it was now our unbelief. Amen. That hinder us. But it was, amen, not the sins that you committed. It was not the sins that you inherited from Adam. It was not the sins of judicial sentence of God when He declared all men are sinners. But it was our rejection. It was our refusal, po mga kapatid. Amen. Of that forgiveness offered by God to us. So, it is possible, po mga kapatid. So, I believe, po mga kapatid, that one of the most misunderstood doctrine in the Bible is the issue of forgiveness of sins. Marami pong, marami pong nagkakamali po dito po mga kapatid. And also, I am also convinced, okay, I am also convinced that, uh, that yung two most difficult, okay, two most difficult things to teach a Christian is Include number one forgiveness. Number one is to to that his sins have been completely and eternally forgiven. Ang hirap ituro yun. How do I know na mahirap ituro yun? Malalaman mo sa appreciation ng response ng nakikinig sa yon. Mahirap ituro na sa sabiin mo sa isang mananampalataya na do you not know that your past, present, future sins have been forgiven? Sa mga lahat na na-Bible study dito, sa mga lahat na nagpi-preach dito, anong response ng mga mga ano, mga tao? Ganon. Pero sabihin mo, alam mo bang nanalo ka ng 235 million sa loto? Do you think ang ang reaction niya, pakitaan mo pa ng ebidensya, reaction niya? Ganon. Ibig sabihin, the difference of the two is na intindihan niya yung value. Nakuha niya yung sins. Pero pag sabihin mo sa isang tao na naligtas, do you not know that your sins are forgiven? Past, present, future. That you are, your sins are forgiven forever. Kahirap ituro nun. At pangalawa, na mahirap ituro po mga kabatid, na di difficult to teach po mga kabatid, is this forgiveness should be extended to others. Mahirap ituro na patawarin mo na. Naintindihan po ng mga pastors, ni Pastor Ben, na lalo na pag magipag usap sa husband and wife, patawarin mo na. Patawarin mo na. You know, I counseled one couple one time, binigay ko yung forgiveness, sabi ko, if you could not forgive this man, forgive him in behalf of Christ. Sabi niya, I'm sorry, but I cannot. So, mahirap. Lalo na pag sobrang grabe yung fault na i you know, could you imagine po mga kapatid, what if, what if, may isang lalaki na criminal have done something evil to your daughter or to your sons? And you are asked, in a, sa biblic, sa, sa, kaya nga tinanong ko kay brother, ano, kay brother Magno, is this a legal term yung forgiveness? Hindi. Alam kung bakit? Because the court will not say that, forgive him na lang para hindi na siya makulong. But the court will always say, justice ang kailangan. Amen. 
Pero the Bible will say, forgive. Sabi nung, nila, pastangan niya ang aking mga, pa, aking pamilya, tapos sabihin mo lang sa akin, patawarin ko. Kaya madaling sabihin eh. Marami din sabi, oh, pinatawad ko na. Pero God who knows our heart, hindi naman eh. So, mahirap. Pero, totoo, kailangan natin tanggapin na nangyari ito sa iyo, napatawad ka ng Panginoon. Amen. At sinabihan tayo na kailangan din natin magpatawad sa iba. Amen. So, I, we'll talk about more of that later on. So, why all the difference of opinion on the subject so foundational to our, our Christian life? Bakit ganon? Bakit madaming iba-ibang konsepto na itong subject na ito ay napaka-importante po mga kabatid? Ganon din, ganon din sa mga maraming truth sa Biblia po mga kabatid. What's the problem? Bakit so many opinions? Again po mga kabatid, that is the failure to rightly divide the word of truth. It's always the failure to rightly divide. That's why we are mixed with so many opinions po mga kabatid. And it led many sincere believers in Christ to inconsistent positions on forgiveness. Kaya bakit ganun ang konsepto ng iba? Because they failed to rightly divide po mga kabatid. Some people, they thank God because God has forgiven them po mga kabatid all of their sin. But they begin to list condition which they believe they must meet if God is to accept them. Ganun eh. Oh, para mapatawad ako ng Panginoon. Madami pang condition. I have to confess all my sins. I have to ask forgiveness. I have to repent from all my sins. Why is no like that? And many Christians is na, na ganun po, mga sincere Christian, ganun kanilang sagot. Anong, anong failure? Failure to rightly divide the word of truth. This verse na nabasa natin, even the forgiveness of sin, is part of the unsearchable riches of Christ that if you fail to rightly divide the word of truth po mga kapatid, mamiss mo ang real blessing, ang treasures ng verse na ito po mga kapatid. Because it was untold. Okay? It was, it was not taught in a previous time before sa panahon po natin po mga kapatid. Now, I'd like you I'd like you to go to Psalm 130. So this is a thousand years before the Lord Jesus Christ came approximately but ito yung sabi ng psalmist Psalm 130 Okay Psalm 130 I'd like you to look at verse number 3 The Bible says If thou Lord Shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Wow, that's a great question. If the Lord will mark iniquities, who shall stand? But look at verse 4. But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. So there is forgiveness with thee. So what we see in this verse, mga kabatid, the psalmist did not explain why. He did not explain. He did not explain how, okay, or however, mga kabatid, on what basis a just and a holy God, po mga kabatid, could forgive a guilty sinner. Sinabi lang na there is forgiveness in the Lord, but there is no explanation how. And how could God? But sinabi lang there is forgiveness. With God, po mga kabatid. So, but the explanation of this was proclaimed, po mga kabatid. The explanation of this verse was proclaimed, po mga kabatid. Okay, 1,000 years later by the Apostle Paul. Amen. And uh, who was a blasphemer, who was an injurious person, who was a persecutor. Amen who persecuted the church of God, who said himself that he is the chief sinners. I remember that question sa, sa, ano, sa, at, sa heart of the pastor. Do you remember that, Brother JR? That question ni Pastor Ben. 
Why, why it has to be Paul? Bakit kay Paul ibinigay ang biyaya? Bakit kailangan si Paul ang mangaral nito at magrepresent ng salvation by grace through faith alone? Because Paul represents the chiefest sinner, the sin of a religious man, the sin of a zealous man, the sins, lahat, whether morally, that they're, he represents all that. He is the worst of the worst. So that grace can be magnified. Amen. You know, grace can only be magnified in the presence of unworthiness. Amen. Grace could not be emphasized if there is no unworthiness. Kaya marami nagsasabi ng mga, when we talk about this, a series on grace, a workman's treasure, sabi nila, uh, Lord, salamat sa iyong biyaya, kahit hindi ako karapat dapat, binigyan ako. Uh, actually, that's a, tama yung statement na yun, but if you search out po mga patid, kaya nga may biyaya eh, dahil hindi ka karapat dapat. Intindihan po natin? Hindi mo, salamat sa iyong biyaya kahit hindi ako karapat dapat. Kung karapat dapat ka, hindi biyaya yan. Nakuha niyo bang punto natin po mga kapatid? So there's the Apostle Paul, the chief sinners, amen, but forgiven and unsaved by that infinite grace of God. Amen. So he preached starting at Antioch in Acts 13, a thousand years after, in Acts 13, verse 38 and 39, let me read. Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Amen. So now, thank God po mga kabatid. But, if you also search the verse, even this verse does not fully answer the question, how could God forgive me? How could God pardon a sinful sinner like me? That verse did not even answer po mga kabatid. On what basis does God forgive sins? Through the, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through this man po mga kabatid. Amen. So, why through this man? Because the answer is on the basis of his payment for our sins on the Calvary's cross, mga kabatid. And thus, the Apostle Paul wrote, mga kabatid, explaining how could through this man forgiveness of sins be available. Then we read, Romans 3.24, being justified. Amen. Freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So, sinabi lang ni Paul doon sa Acts 13, through this man. But if you ask further, how could God, through this man, forgive us? Because He become our redemption. His blood was shed so that forgiveness will be made available po mga kapatid. So, now thank God through Christ's finished work that there is not a sinner who needs to remain unforgiven. You don't have to be unforgiven. Amen. Because there is now forgiveness available. Hence, our text is saying, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Amen. In Ephesians chapter number, ganun din sa Ephesians 1 verse 7, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Where is forgiveness of sins coming from? According to the riches of His grace. That's why I said forgiveness or forgive is a grace word. Because it is according to the riches of His grace. Now, going to Ephesians chapter number 4, Ephesians chapter number 4, the Bible says that God, okay, look at that, in which pupuntahan din natin yan mamaya po mga kabatid, as we go on, but let's read this first, 
Ephesians 4 verse 32, And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. I'd like you to notice, your, take your attention on that, God for Christ's sake. Okay? God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Mga kapatid, that this is only part of the truth. For God forgives sinners. Amen. That God did not just merely desire to forgive you. Amen. But rather po mga kapatid, because Christ paid, amen, our sins and purchased our redemption, that's why Christ or God can forgive us for Christ's sake. Amen. He did not just, because He is a gracious God. Many times I said that God could not just forgive you because He is naturally gracious. But His grace would not give Him the license to condone sin. Amen. And we know that po mga kapatid. Now, why I say it's a failure, it's a failure to, to rightly divide is the root issue of understanding forgiveness. Let me, let me give you a quick a quick uh, survey with regards to forgiveness. First, mga kapatid, forgiveness under grace. Okay, let's have, let's talk about forgiveness under grace. So we know Paul as the apostle to the Gentiles and the steward of the mysteries of God to the church, which is his body, gives only one condition. Amen. One condition for forgiveness of sins. And what is that? Belief of the gospel. He gave only one condition for forgiveness of God to realize in the believer, and that is through faith. And that is faith po mga kabated. Now, according to Colossians 1.14 and Ephesians 1.7, that forgiveness of sin is intimately, okay, intimately or inseparably Link, mga kabated, with our redemption. Okay, there is forgiveness because there is redemption. Amen. So, it is inseparably linked with our redemption, which in turn, mga kabated, is based upon Christ's sacrificial blood and the riches of His grace. And I'd like you also to notice carefully that forgiveness, as with all our spiritual blessings, is past tense. So, every time Paul taught about forgiveness, it's always past tense. Just like he taught about the love of God. Sometimes we say, God loves you to the sinner. That's wrong. That's not a, that's not a Bible, ano po, who told you that God loves the sinner? The Bible says, God is angry with the wicked every day. But say this, God loved you. Because God is not loving them every day. God loved the sinner at one time, at one place, and that is Calvary. That's why every time the love of God is mentioned for the sinner, it is always pointing at the cross. And there is no other place that God loved anybody apart from the cross. And that is the ultimate expression of the love of God at the cross of Calvary. That's why, for God so loved the world. Amen. But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners. Amen. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Hereby I perceive we the love of God when He laid down His life for us. Amen. The Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. Wives, amen. Amen. I husband, love your wives, as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for it. Amen. We could say to the believer, God loves you. Amen. But every time you talk about the love of God for the sinner, you always bring him back to the cross because God is not loving what he's doing right now. 
God is not loving His unbelief right now. God is not loving His rejection and resistance right now. But the truth of the matter is, He is under condemnation and He is condemned already. And the wrath of God abided on Him. Not until, amen, that will be removed. Not until he will believe on that love 2,000 years ago po mga kapatid. Now, the same true with forgiveness. When we talk about forgiveness, it is always past tense in the Pauline epistle. Amen. Meron pong forgiving one another. Present po yun. But when you talk about the forgiveness of God, it is always in the past tense. Because it's a done deal. And God could not forgive anybody apart from the cross. Apart from the redemption. There is no forgiveness whatsoever apart from the finished work of Christ. That is one thing we need to understand of forgiveness under grace, mga kapatid. That's why we, we are told, in whom we have redemption. Redemption is already there. It's already available. We have redemption. Even the forgiveness of sins. Amen. It is not something na, na ibibigay pa ng Panginoon. But rather, it's already okay, available and the work of forgiveness is already done. Amen. It's just a matter of appropriation of faith, mga kabated. Amen. And to confirm, this wonderful news, mga kabated. What are those scriptures, mga kabated? Ephesians 4.32. Nabasa natin, And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. That's the present, forgiving one another. We ought to be forgiving. Pero when we talk about the forgiveness of God, look at, Even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Amen. It's past tense. It is something in the past. It's something na nangyayari na sa bawat believer. In Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 2.13, Colossians 2.13, and you being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh had he quickened together with Him, having forgiven you all. Having forgiven you all trespasses. Amen. In Romans chapter number 5, verse 5 to 8, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described it, the blessedness of a man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquity are forgiven. You see, it's still in the past tense po, mga kabatid. In Acts 13, verse 38 to 39, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. So the verses na aking na-mention, mga kabatid, represents the teaching on forgiveness for the present dispensation of the grace of God. That is the forgiveness that we enjoy now. That is the forgiveness that we, we are in right now, amen, and that we have right now. And the, uh, and the instructed or the, 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 the believer that has been taught po, mga kabatid, knows, you know, that we are sinner. By nature, and we are, uh, by nature, we are dead in sins, we are dead in trespasses and sins, and such cannot merit a place in heaven with God. You know that, mga kapatid. That is our standing, but the love of God has provided forgiveness, amen, for all of us through the blood of His Son. And faith in Christ Jesus, faith in His Son, po mga kapatid, is the only responsibility which God has placed, amen, okay, in response to that love, in response to that grace of God. Only faith is the precondition or the requirement of God. And you know, faith is not works. Amen. So, Christ died for our sins and that He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scripture. And that is the gospel that we receive from Paul, po mga kabatid. 
And that is the gospel that Paul also received, po mga kapatid, from the glorified Lord Jesus Christ. And he preached wherever he went with that gospel, po mga kapatid. So that is, Paul is preaching forgiveness on the basis of what Christ had done for us, po mga kapatid. So, and those who, who are saved and forgiven, we know, po mga kapatid, that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. There is no sin that could unforgiven you. Amen. No sin that could undo that binding that God brought through His grace po mga kapatid. So, mga kapatid, the problem po mga kapatid, okay, the knowledge, why I say that, it's so important, because the knowledge of these facts or of these truths, mga kapatid, it gives you peace. It gives you assurance. Amen. It gives you comfort and real joy, unspeakable. Amen. Kasi, but in the case of many sincere Christians, listen, in the case of many sincere Christians who wrongly unite the Word of God, or who does not rightly divide the word of God. You know what happened to, to them po mga kapatid? Okay, they, they, take for, they take the teachings of forgiveness of sins from the past dispensations. Doon sila kumuha ng teaching ng forgiveness of sins from the past dispensation and transferred it or carried it or applied them in our present dispensation. You know what would be the result if you teach forgiveness and you don't rightly divide? Kukuha ka ng past forgiveness sa Old Testament, dadalhin mo sa ating panahon. You know what would be the result of that? It is fear. The result of that is doubt. It is uncertainty and lack of boldness in your Christian life. You know why? Because you have to accept that the teaching of forgiveness in our time and age is not necessarily the same with the manner of how God will forgive men under the Old Testament or under the law, po mga kapatid. Kaya ang resulta, supposedly forgiveness will provide you assurance, pero iba kasi ang pinaghugutan ng forgiveness at hindi nagra-rightly divide, po mga kapatid. Kaya ang nagiging problema, meron pa rin fears, meron pa rin doubt. That's why they will think, could God still accept me? Dahil sa ginagawa ko? Amen. So, let me look at another thing. Forgiveness under the law. I gave you forgiveness under grace. And forgiveness under the law. Why I have to do this? I believe it is beneficial for us to point a contrast of forgiveness. Para ma-appreciate natin of what forgiveness do we have. Let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter number 7, verse 14. Okay, 2 Chronicles chapter number 14, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 14. And of course, this is quoted by many faithful men and good men. And we're not, we are not cynical, but we're just pointing out something, mga kapatid. Verse number 14, the Bible says, If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. You see that forgiveness? And will hear and will heal their land. So we know this is a familiar verse used by many sincere preachers wishing to see their country being forgiven by God. And that is a good, ano po mga kabatid, a good verse. There is a counsel there. We believe there is a counsel there po mga kabatid. But talking of personal, okay, forgiveness of sins sa bawat believer po mga kabatid, mga kabatid, if you look at, if you take a closer look of that verse, my people which are called by my name, and you know it refers to Israel under the law. Amen. You know it refers to Israel and not the church under grace. 
Please. Kasi kung, kung hindi ka doctrinally sound sa forgiveness at dito ka magbabase, you will be questioning your forgiveness. Naku, hindi pa naman. Kasi ang, ang ano dito, na, mayroon pong condition eh. The land to be healed here, I will heal their land. You know it's not Philippines. Although there is a practical application na makuha po natin po mga kapatid, but you know the healing of the Philippines in the millennium kasama sa Israel. Amen. So, wag po tayo mag-despair if lumalala ang ating panahon kahit sino pang ilalagay po mga kapatid. Pero ang hope lang ng Pilipinas ay hindi para magiging make Philippines great again. Wala naman tayong, hindi naman tayo naka-experience ng greatness. Ang US, meron silang, meron silang pride and history of that because they were once a solid Christian nation and they would like to revive that because they are in departing. Pero sa atin, to make Philippines great again, siguro sa time ni Marcos, naka-experience ang mga Pilipino. Pero what greatness are we talking about? We're talking of forgiveness here po mga kapatid. Anong land ang i-heal? We know it's Israel. Amen. And you know, it's not, the church is not a land. Amen. And we don't, the church don't have even a land. Amen. Because we are ambassadors and foreigners and strangers in this world. And the church is a citizen of glory above. So, sometimes we forget our doctrine. Okay? Just to remind us po mga kapatid. So the land is to be healed. It's not the church but Israel. Now note the conditional nature of this forgiveness. Because in the Old Testament, there is a conditional nature of their forgiveness. If my people shall. Okay? Yun ang condition. Shall. What? Madami po. Shall humble, pray, seek, and turn from their wicked ways. Then, then will I forgive. So what we call, what you see there, if. And then, if, then, then. That is a precondition po, mga kabated. So that is the characteristics we know. That is the characteristics of the old covenant, the law. If, okay, if you obey, then I will bless you. If ye disobey, then I will curse you. The if and the then is a very constant, ano po, uh, description ng batas po, mga kabated. Amen. So, this system of conditional blessing is stated repeatedly in the Old Testament from Exodus to Malachi po, mga kabated. If Israel obeyed God's covenant, then God would bless them. And if not, God would curse them po, mga kabated. This is not how God deals, okay, with believers today. You please note on that. That is not how God forgive you today. Amen. And you know, you know why I say this? Because ma maririnig mo yon sa maraming preaching about forgiveness, maririnig mo ngayon sa maraming preaching about sa gospel, na paano ka mapatawad ng Panginoon? Para mapatawad ka ng Panginoon, humingi ka ng kapatawaran sa Kanya. Para mapatawad ka ng Panginoon, magrepent ka sa lahat ng kasalanan mo. Para magpatawad ka ng Panginoon, mag-confess ka ng lahat ng kasalanan mo. So, what is that? That is a failure to rightly divide. That's why they miss that forgiveness is in Christ and what Christ did. And forgiveness now, today, in the modern teachers and preachers, because of failing to rightly divide, is now precondition on the works of men. Kaya ano na ngayon ang kaligtasan ng outcome? Po mga kapatid, saan nagmula ang pundasyon ng sinner's prayer? Sa ganitong konsepto, ang konsepto nila, how could I be forgiven by God if I am not made sorry? How could I be forgiven by God if I am not sorry of my sins? So that's why they, they add to the gospel cliches by saying, you have to feel sorry of your sin. You have to, to, to be sorrow of that sins that you you committed, the sins that you committed, then God will forgive you. So, ano na nangyari po? Ang outcome is another gospel. 
It is now becoming an element of the gospel. So, diyan nagmula ang sinner's prayer. Kaya kung pansinin mo sa mga sinner's prayer, kasama dun, Lord, forgive me of my sins. The fact in itself na sinabi na isang sinner, forgive me of my sins, that is already an unbelief of what Christ had done on the cross that is already a misunderstanding or patunay na hindi na intindihan na isang ay isang makasalanan na ang forgiveness ay na kay Kristo lamang at sa ginawa ni Kristo because they formulate another way that God would forgive them apart than what Christ had done for them. Pag sinabi mo, Lord, you have to pray to, for God to save you. Is there not is something wrong with ganun ka, ilalogic ka ba? May problema ba pag magsabi ka ng Panginoon, Lord, save me! That in itself also is another statement of unbelief. Why? Hindi ka actually pala nananiwala na yung ginawa ni Kristo, yun ang kaligtasan na niganiwa para sa'yo. That's why it, it, it is now a question of, how could God forgive if I am not sorry? He is. He can. Because He already, Amen dealt with sin, with finality, and took it out of the way. Amen! Sabi mo, Lord, forgive me of my sins. What sin are you talking about? What sin are you talking about? Amen. So, kung ganun ang konsepto, you have to clarify, at yun ang content ng gospel. Dahil sa death, burial, resurrection ni Kristo, ang forgiveness available na. God is offering forgiveness through faith. Amen. Sa lahat ng mananampalataya po mga kapatid sa ginawa ni Kristo. That's not how God deal with the believers today, yung pinag-usapan natin. Because we have already been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And guess what? That includes forgiveness. This is the context of Ephesians 1.7 in whom we have redemption through His blood if the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of His grace. Ano yung according to the riches of His grace yan? Saan yan? Sa Ephesians 1.3 that established the context that blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And that includes acceptance in the beloved. That includes being chosen in Christ. That includes predestination. That includes redemption. That includes forgiveness of sins. And many, many more in the context. Amen. So in relation to 2 Chronicles 7.14, that we must recognize the difference between interpretation and application. Yun po ang point. Can I apply practically Okay, First Chronicles 7.14, why not? Amen. Is it wrong to be humble? It's not. Amen. Is it wrong to ano po mga kapatid? To, to pray? It's not. Amen. But you know, that you should know the difference between interpretation and application po mga kapatid. Since all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness po, mga kabatid. So, there are truths in this verse, mga kabatid, which can also speak to us today. Amen. Because it is, uh, uh, it is, the scripture is profitable, but only as we apply. How will I apply this truth? I should apply this truth in light to the revelation that God has given to the Apostle Paul. I should apply this truth, okay, in light of the mystery concerning the body of Christ. Mga kapatid, mahirap po mag ano po, but the interpretation, you know the interpretation of this verse, that it cannot be the church, it cannot be you, but it is Israel. And it is the forgiveness under the law. Amen. It is not after the cross. And that's the interpretation. And by no means, by the way, the Bible has singleness of sense. You have to first seek the actual sense, the literal sense, the plain sense. Amen. The real sense of that verse. And that is interpretation. And that is solely for Israel and by no means the body of Christ will take this as his means for forgiveness of sins po mga kapatid. So, while some 
have come to acknowledge the difference between the mosaic and the Pauline system of blessings, including forgiveness. Marami po have acknowledged, but fewer have seen that conditional forgiveness is carried into the non-Pauline writings of the New Testament. Po, mga kapatid. There are also in the New Testament na non-Pauline forgiveness, mga kapatid, have carried. Like for example, Matthew 6, verse 16, uh, 6, 12. The Bible says, And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. You see that? The if and then. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So many of these uh, Christians who are sincere, who fail to rightly divide, will take their concept of forgiveness from this verse. That's why, amen, forgiveness is also a dispensational thing. Mga kabatid. Amen. In Matthew 18, verse number, Matthew 18, if you have your Bible with you, you follow me, verse 34 and 35. And the Bible says, And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. Look at the next part, verse 35. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Anong gagawin? Kung anong ginawa ng Lord, this is a parable, kung anong ginagawa ng Lord na ito, He was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due to him. Anong gagawin ng Panginoon sa mga Israelites? Likewise, shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not, forgive not, everyone, his brother, their trespasses. Nakita niyo po yung konsepto. So that's a conditional. Ganun ba ang ating forgiveness? Hindi, po mga kapatid. Now look at Mark 11, verse 25. Mark chapter number 11, verse number 25. The Bible says in Mark 11, And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you, your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Kahirap nun. Is this verse true? Yes. By no means we should ano po, change the real sense of this. It is what it is. It is true to the dispensation where God give it. But is it true now? No. It's not applied. Amen. And cannot be applied now. Look at Luke chapter number 6, verse 37 po mga kapatid. Luke 6, I'd like you to look at verse number 37. The Bible says there po mga kapatid, there's that verse na I'd like you to see. Luke chapter number 6, verse 37. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. And look at the next part. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. So kung i-apply mo sa panahon po natin ngayon, alam kong marami kang doubts. Kasi deep inside with our hearts, marami pa tayong hindi pa napatawad. Marami pa tayo na may mga grudges. So kung yun ang basis ng kaligtasan natin, walang pupunta sa atin sa langit. But that is not how our forgiveness is preconditioned now. Amen. But thank God, in whom we have redemption through His blood. <laughs> Even the forgiveness of sins. Praise God. In Luke chapter number 17, since you are in the book of Luke, I'm just magnifying these things so that you will appreciate what you have. Amen. Luke chapter number 17, verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, 
forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Mga kapatid, minsan people will use this verse. That's why they will not forgive their brother because they have not done this. Is that how we should forgive others? Come on! You have done this seven times. You have to come to me seven times also. Then I will forgive you. If you will repent, then I will forgive you. This brings the concept again. How can, how can a man forgive someone if he is not sorry about his sins? Can he? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Again, when you took... A, Pastor Ben, I could, not, I could not forget this, Pastor Ben. You said this. When you took away the irritants, Pag mawala na yung irritants na yon, possible ang forgiveness. Ang term ni Pastor Ben is irritants. But sa atin ngayon, yung sin, yung nagihinder, possible po mga kapatid. Amen, amen. So, dun, yung mga, mga, mga situation na sinabi ko kanina, dito sila kumuha ng konsepto. Nasa Bible, Nasa Bible yun. Pero kung if you don't rightly divide, hindi natin matin yung expectation ng Panginoon sa panahon po natin. Ganun po ka-importante yung rightly dividing. Because forgiveness is not just an emotional thing. It is a dispensational doctrinal thing. And if you are right with your doctrine with this, then you can appropriate forgiveness the right way. According to God's expectation sa panahon po natin. Now, if you know, if you are noting carefully that forgiveness, as what we have mentioned, is extended by the Heavenly Father only when forgiveness is first extended to others. It is preconditioned to the forgiveness if we extend to others. Likewise, the other is given only if he repents. So the order is very simple. The offense is committed, then confrontation and rebuke, and repentance of offender, then forgiveness extended by the victim, then God's forgiveness extended. Napaka-komplikado, napaka-hirap. Now, kung i-apply mo yan at hindi ka mag-rightly divide, wala ka assurance of salvation. At hindi ka pwede magiging self-righteous, ah, hindi naman ako ganyang tao, hindi naman ako ma... ma, ma anong tawag nito? Madamdam, madamdamin. Madamdamin. Madam Dabin, di naman ako nag, nagtatago ng mga grudges, hindi naman ako ganyang, ah, really? Wala bang buhay sa buhay mo? Paano pag ganun? Pag, given na napatawad ka sa ginawa ni Kristo, pero kailangan mong i-maintain ang iyong kaligtasan sa pamamagitan nito, can you guarantee yourself that you are still saved today? You see the danger? Mga kapatid, you see the danger? And you see, ang, ang, Ang ating doktrina sa, on how God forgive us, yun din ang basis on how we should forgive others. Naalala nyo po kung on how God will forgive them in the past is also the basis on how they should also forgive others. If they humble, if they repent, diba? ganun din ang isa. Sabi dito, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Now, and if the trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. So, ganun din ang nagiging kaisipan ng mga tao on how they should forgive. So true sa atin. Kung papaano ka pinatawad ng Panginoon ngayon, ganun din kung paano natin papatawarin ang iba. Yun din ang basis sa panahon po natin. So, this teaching shows forgiveness na pinakita ko kanina sa Sa, sa Gospels, sa Matthew, Mark, and sa Luke, this is the basis of the forgiveness in the Millennial Kingdom. Because this is the teaching of Jesus Christ. You want to know the doctrines of Jesus Christ? That is the doctrines of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is for the Millennial passage, and that's not for the Church Age, mga kapatid. So in contrast, in contrast, okay, Paul's teachings and writing revealed that the believer in Christ today is working from a position of perpetual forgiveness. 
we have a perpetual forgiveness, one time perpetual forgiveness, and from which also we are free on that basis to forgive others. Let's look at Ephesians 4.32 once again. Ephesians 4.32 Forgiving one another, even as Christ sake, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. How do I forgive others? Even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Do you have to, to ask Him to, to repent seven times? Do you still have to ask Him that He should feel sorry of His sin? Then He will forgive. Is that what God required to you? To be forgiven? Kasi delikado pag magiging teaching mo yan at doktrina mo yan, works ang kaligtasan mo. That's why work din ang, ang basis mo para pagpatawarin yung iba. They have to earn it so that they could have your favor of forgiveness. But that's, praise God, it's not. Amen. God, for Christ's sake, Amen, hath forgiven us. And also Colossians 3.13, forgiving one another, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Amen. Even, how do I forgive others? Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Because the subject of forgiveness, the topic of forgiveness, is the believer is both the object and the subject. You, we become the object of forgiveness, the object of God's forgiveness, and we, is, we are also the subject of forgiveness po mga kapatid. We are also to forgive. Amen. So, clear po mga kapatid that these teachings shows forgiveness in relation to the mystery revealed to the Apostle Paul. Amen. Not for the millennial passages. So, let me quote Schofield. Sabi ni Schofield, the one who wrote the Schofield Bible, sabi niya, under the law, forgiveness is conditioned upon a like spirit in us. Under grace, we are forgiven for Christ's sake and exhorted to forgive because we have been forgiven. So, ano ang una niyang statement? Under the law, forgiveness is conditioned upon a like spirit in us. Ibig sabihin, for me to be forgiven, I should have a forgiving spirit first. But thank God po mga kabated. Under grace, we are forgiven for Christ's sake. Amen! And that is also the exhortation and the basis on how we should forgive others because we have been forgiven. That's why it's so important na nasa past tense ang forgiveness natin. Amen! Hindi ba process na papatawarin ka pa lang, but sa atin, forgiven. Amen! Forgiven. And thank God, forgiven forever. Amen! Amen. So, that's a difference. That's a striking difference between the law and grace. Between conditional and unconditional forgiveness po mga kapatid. And both of these systems are consistent po mga kapatid with God's character po mga kapatid. Consistent with God's character. You know why, why is that's the basis of God's forgiveness in the Old Testament? Bakit ganun? How, how do you say it's consistent? Na nag-iba naman, consistent ah, sa karakter ng Panginoon. Bakit ganun ang kondisyon ng Panginoon sa Old Testament? Dahil wala pa si Kristo eh. Wala pang nag-satisfy sa, sa wrath ng Panginoon at sa demand ng Panginoon. That's why may kondisyon na ganun. At bakit ganito ang kondisyon sa ating forgiveness ngayon? Dahil nandyan na si Kristo eh. Nasatisfy na ang God the Father eh. That's why hindi na natin kailangan ng ganun. It is consistent to who God is. Amen. To His character po, mga kapatid. Amen. And ano ang point na why we are teaching this? And how we should rejoice to know, amen, that Christ become our forgiveness of sins. And how we should rejoice to understand that forgiveness of sins is available now 
And God is no longer seeking your, your ano po, yung, yung lahat ng, na ni-required niya, just like the Old Testament, which we could not do. Amen. And thank God, it is available sa ating present dispensation in the dispensation of the grace of God. The point is, let us acknowledge the apostleship of Paul in this present dispensation of grace. And in his writing alone, in his writing alone, do we find the doctrine, position, and walk, and the destiny of the church. The future of our church, the body of Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ have given that revelation to the Apostle Paul. My point of telling you this, that may we never lose sight, okay, of, of, uh, of where we stand in the program of God right now, in the plan of God right now, because that is crucial to this study and understanding of forgiveness of sins. Kung mawala yun, makalimutan mo lang, mag-rightly divide po, mga kabatid, magkaroon tayo ng problem. But being properly instructed to rightly divide the word of truth, and these things are absolutely essential to our joy, to our service, and to our assurance in our Christian life. Amen. How can we love and praise God for something we are not sure He has given us. That's why he ha we have to understand this. That's why we have to rejoice over this truth, mga kabatid. And likewise also, how can we joy and peace when we fear that God will withdraw what He has done for us? Do you have? We cannot have peace. Amen. If, if we have an idea, what if I sin? Then God would withdraw these blessings. God would withdraw these gifts. Po mga kabatid. So therefore, let us not unscripturally or undispensationally, okay, or let not unscriptural or undispensational teaching would separate us from the enjoyment of our sins being forgiven, po mga kabatid, and that we have fellowship with one another and that we may have in whom we have boldness and access and confidence by the faith of him. Don't let any doctrine destroy us that po, mga kabatid. That every time you read, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin should mean something for you. Something great sa atin po, mga kabatid. It should steer our heart. It should move our heart to praise. Amen. To adoration because of what he has done for us. Because just think of your state if God has not forgiven you yet. Just think of your state that God is ready to devour you and that God at any time ready to take you away and sweep you with His wrath and smote you with His anger. Just think about that. Amen. Makatulog ka ba? Hindi. But ngayon, dapat makatulog ka na. Amen. Dapat naglilingkod ka na sa Panginoon kung totoo mong naintindahan nito. Bakit ang, ang lampa-lampa natin sa ating Christian life? Bakit walang ka-joy-joy sa ating Christian life? Because sa iba kasi tayo kumuha ng joy eh. Sa pira, pera kasi tayo kumuha ng joy eh. Sa, sa, sa kayamanan at many things in, the, the, in this world, dun kasi tayo kumuha ng joy. Pag wala yun, kaya bad trip. Kasi hindi mo, wala ka namang garantee na makuha mo yun eh. Pero you have something that could never be taken away. And that is forgiveness. Amen. Be founded with that joy po, mga kapatid, doon sa mga bagay na ito. And that would lead us, mga kapatid, to our closing exhortation that forgiveness in our personal relationships. Forgiveness in our relationships. Personal relationship. Because you know, doon ka kumukuha ng power. Doon ka kumukuha ng prinsipyo sa ating, sa ating personal relationship. Because forgiveness is essential in every human relation. You know that. Essential in our local church. Kasi we are related one to another. Essential in our home and family. It is very important in our friendship. In our marriages, Brother Dondon. Amen. You know what breaks marriage? Unforgiving spirit. Because people could not just forgive. That's why they chose to break it up. That's a real issue. That's a real problem. 
Yun po yung antot sometimes. No? Ang kung ika-counsel mo nang maigi ka usapin mo yung couple, bakit paulit-ulit yung mga away? Kahit an nakaraan na, sobrang tagal na, bakit paulit-ulit pa rin? Nabubuhay pa rin. Bakit hindi pa na took out of the way yung irritants? Kaya walang forgiveness mangyayari. Amen. So it is essential po mga kabatid. And a forgiving attitude, mga kabatid, should be a characteristic of a believer that is also forgiven by God. It should be the natural characteristic sa atin po mga kabatid. So when asking forgiveness, the world has an expression. Kaya nga, pag may, may mga counseling, minsan sa mga worldly counseling, they say, they will always say, the counselor will say, can you find it in your heart to forgive him? Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Sometimes ganun ang tanong po mga kabatid. To simply put is simply this. They are asking others to look for forgiveness in a wrong place. Amen. So we know that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Amen. And you know that. That any forgiveness that someone finds there Amen. Is likely to come with a great condition. You ask, okay, how will I, I, sh I will find forgiveness in my heart. Look within your heart. And there is still that space there para sa kanya, room para sa kanya. And let him stay there. Kung ganun ang basis natin, yung mga psychological, yung mga modernistic, humanistic, pamamaraan po mga kapatid, that, that, that forgiveness is preconditioned with many, many requirements. And I'm telling you, and that is, that is selfish po mga kapatid. If you are finding it difficult to forgive someone, rather than trying to find it in your heart, why don't you find it in God's grace? Find it in Christ, not in your heart po mga kapatid. And be kind one to another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. You don't seek it somewhere else. You don't seek it sa kanyang merits. You don't seek it sa kanyang nagagawa. Oh, ano bang nagagawa mo na sa akin for me to forgive you? Find it in Christ po, mga kapatid. So, uh, people will say, Brother Roji, maybe, maybe you don't know how this brother offended me. Maybe you don't just know the pain that he caused me. Maybe you just don't know how it costs, it grieves me every day, my wife or my husband. Because you don't know the situation. You don't know the real, the real, uh, ano po, the real story of this. Tama yun. It's true. I don't know. Hindi ko talaga alam. Kayo lang nakakalam how much the pain, how much the hurts po mga kabated. Hindi, hindi ko talaga alam po mga kabated. But, but one thing I know, one thing I know is this. Was it more than how your sins offended God? The sins that your brother have committed to you or your husband committed to you or your, your wives committed to you, is it greater than the offense that you do it to God, you, do, you have done to God? To be fair ba? Yet, mga kabatid, in grace, He forgave you. Amen. Now, God is asking you to forgive your brother just like how he has forgiven you. Mahirap ituro as what I have told you. But let's live in light with the truth if we are real Bible believers. Po mga kapatid. Because God was satisfied with the payment that Christ made on that cross for your brother's offense also, not just for you. Amen. Christ also died for someone whom you say you hate. Amen. And let's not forget that. Amen. Christ has also forgiven him, whether your husband or your wife, as he did to you. Amen. Now, if you fail to forgive him by God's grace, listen very carefully. 
Mga husbands, wives, na nanonood po dito, hindi ko alam ko anong conflict. Hindi ko sinasabing perfect ang marriages natin. We are still on, ano po mga kapatid, on this world. But if you have problem, if you have problem with our relationship or with our brothers to brothers po mga kapatid, if you, could, if you fail to forgive or if you could not forgive, okay, your husband, your wife, your brother, or whoever they may be po mga kapatid, okay, by grace or through Christ po mga kapatid, that means you have a higher standard of forgiveness than God. Because in spite of what you have done, those unlimited sins on how you put him to shame, on how you malign him, on how you destroy him, and how you blaspheme him, and God still, amen, forgiven you. But if you could not forgive your brother in his little sins, then you have higher standard than God. Amen. That is a real problem po, mga kapatid. So God help us. May God help us, mga kapatid. So let's not be like the world to look forgiveness for in a wrong place, po, mga kapatid. Amen. If your brother sin, if your brother sin or wife sin or your brother sin abounded to you, amen, ag, ag, or abounded against you, then let God's grace more abound, po, mga kapatid, sa buhay po natin. Amen. Because that's how God forgive us. Where, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Where sin, grace did much more abound. Do you not know the reality of that? You know why you are still forgiven? Where is forgiveness taken from? According to the riches of His grace. Where is the bank of God's grace? Calvary. Amen. The source where God can forgive you every day of your life is because of that unlimited forgiveness that is poured out at Calvary. And where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. The argument of a carnal person say, Oh, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Because the truth of that verse is that every time you sin, grace abound, grace abound. That's why we have a standing of grace and we have a standing of forgiveness. Now, could we, that, could we do that also? When the sin of our brother or wife or husband... Amen. Abound against us? Will we let also the grace of Christ abound it more? Because you could never get right with our relationship as long there is still that unforgiveness. Mga kapatid. Sa ating buhay po, mga kapatid. Amen. So, we must falter if our feet are not firmly planted in grace. We are instructed to deal with others. In the same way God has dealt with us. Since God has forgiven us all trespasses, past, present, future, therefore it is reasonable to withhold, mga kapatid, forgiveness from those who trespass against us. Is it reasonable? It's not po, mga kapatid. You might say, I was hurt so deeply. So what? You hurt God also so deeply. And more than Amen. What others could have hurt you. And more than what others could have done to you po mga kapatid. Amen. Have you not wounded the heart of your heavenly father by that unforgiving spirit? Can you never forgive more than he has forgiven you? Amen. Yet praise God, he forgave us all. Amen. So I would make this practical appeal. I would make these practical appeals po mga kapatid. Very practical. As we live a life of forgiveness because we are forgiven. Number one po mga kapatid. Make sure that you understand and believe the gospel of the grace of God. Are you saved? Amen. Because without salvation, you could never understand real forgiveness. You will never understand God's forgiveness. Amen. So you need, you have to understand because without the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, mga kapatid, you will not be able to forgive others. You know what the Holy Ghost can do to us? Sabi niya, uh, uh, yung Romans chapter number 5, verse 5 po, mga kapatid, and hope make it not ashamed, for the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. You know, if you are saved, you have the indwelling spirit. At anong ginagawa ng Holy Spirit sa iyong heart? Pinuno niya dapat ng pag-ibig. So kung may pag-ibig, may kapatawaran ng kasalanan. 
kagaya nung paano tayo inibig ng Panginoon, kaya nagkaroon ng kapatawaran ng kasalanan. So make sure that you understand and believe the gospel of the grace of God. Number two, recognize that this attitude springs from the flesh. If you have unforgiving spirit, remember, it's not coming from the new man. It springs from the old man. And it is sinful and it is wicked. And we should not have that, mga kapatid. Because it's not coming from, from the new man po, mga kapatid. And number three, do not indulge the flesh, but judge it. Because according sa ating flesh, masarap magalit, masarap na mag-revenge, masarap hindi magpatawad. But do not indulge the flesh. Give no provision to the flesh, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, consider the depths of sin from which you have been forgiven and what must have meant to our Lord Jesus Christ to die for us. Kung may nagkasala sa iyo ng iba, you, you want to find forgiveness, you want to have grace to forgive others, consider how much you offended God. How deep is your sins? And yet, He forgiven you po mga kapatid. And that gives you, amen, the basis and the strength also to forgive others po mga kapatid. Amen. There was a prayer that, Lord, let me forget what I was before. Amen. Let me not forget, okay? Let me never forget what I was, amen, before I became a Christian. Huwag niyong kalimutan, bago ka na saved. Amen. Then, doon tayo mag magbibigay ng forgiveness. Mga kapatid, I understand, madaming nag, nag-hurt sa'yo, madaming nag-hurt sa atin. Kahit saan. Whether, maybe, saved or unsaved po, mga kapatid. Pero, we don't have any reason at all, being saved, being forgiven, to hold unforgiving spirit sa ating buhay. Number five po, mga kapatid. Number five, take account of what your bitterness is doing to the Holy Spirit inside of you. Remember, every time you have this grudge, this anger, this hatred, bitterness in you, you think of how the Holy Spirit feel inside you. Do you understand? The Bible says, yung context ng grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption, that is, that is 1 Corinthians, uh, that is Ephesians 4.31. Alam mo anong kasunod nun? Mga kabadid? Amen. Yung if chapter 4 verse 32, be kind one to another, tender hearted, or let all bitterness, verse 31 pala, let all bitterness and wrath and clamor and, and evil speaking, and with all, I be put away from you with all malice and all of that. So yun po ang naibigay. Nagigrieve po ang Holy Spirit. Now, gusto mong mga kabatid, sinasabi mo, oh, grabe ang feeling ko, dahil yun ang ginagawa mo. Iniisip mo din ba ang feeling ng Holy Spirit every time you sin? Iniisip mo ba ang feeling ng Holy Spirit na hindi siya makalabas sa loob natin and he's trapped? Every time we are holding a grudge. We're one-sided. We're selfish. Hindi mo lang alam kung gano'n niya ako sinaktan. Alam mo ba kung gano'n mo din sinaktan ng Holy Spirit? Every day in your Christian life. Amen. Number six, forgive the person as an act of the will. Forgive that person as an act of the will po mga kabaden. Uh, my point po mga kabaden, don't wait until you feel like forgiving. But do it deliberately. Do it intentionally. Amen. Do it lovingly. Don't feel, ah, hindi pa, hindi ko pa siya mapatawad ngayon kasi mabigat pa ang loob ko. Hindi ko siya patawad ngayon kasi nandun ang aking kalit, ang aking poot, nandyan pa. You know, God forgive you in spite nandun ang poot sa'yo. Nung ikaw ay nanampalataya sa Kanya, ora mismo nawala yung wrath ng Panginoon. Amen. Hindi, hindi sinabi ng Panginoon, okay, pababain ko muna ang aking anger, ha. Minsan ganun tayo, eh. Amen. Number seven, pray for spiritual welfare of the offender. You, you, can, you can't forgive? You, you have a hard time to forgive? Start to pray for that spiritual welfare of others. Start to pray for that person whom you say you hate. Amen. Start to pray po mga kapatid. Because it is extremely difficult to remain bitter against someone whom you consistently pray. Could you hate someone whom you're praying? 
you will start to love that someone. You don't, you don't wish for ill feeling or ill thing na bang hayari sa tao. We don't pray just like the Old Testament, Lord, take away him with your wrath. We can do that. Lord, smite him with your rod. So, again, it's a dispensational thing. But you try to pray honestly and pray for him, Lord, touch his heart, bless his heart, Lord, na ma-realize niya, ma-recognize niya ang kanyang fault. But when you constantly pray for him, I believe po mga kapatid, you could never be bitter about that someone whom you pray. Number eight po mga kapatid, number eight, be prepared for the reappearance of root of bitterness. I-anticipate mo. Kasi whether we like it or not, meron at meron talagang mag-appear po mga kapatid. Sometimes naulit niya yung kasalanan niya. Sabi niya, hindi na niya gagawin. Pero, just like God, bago ka pa nagkasala, may forgiveness na siya nakahanda. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Ibig kong sabihin, Pag may kasalanan, may nakahanda ng biyaya ang Panginoon. The same truth sa atin. Nagkaroon na, na proper na yung relationship, naayos na yung relationship natin. So anong gagawin po natin mga kapatid? Expect na meron at mang, meron pang mangyayari. Don't live in a world na kung saan hindi na siya magkasala sa iyo. Hindi na siya hindi na niya mauulit. Mauulit at mauulit po yun po mga kapatid. Meron at meron, pero the thing is, you understand na may nakahanda na ng forgiveness. Ina-anticipate mo na. Do you remember po mga kapatid sa 1 John chapter number 2? Sinabi doon, my little children. Sabi niya, I write these things unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. If you take note, if you see the Bible, it is the will of God that we should not sin. Pero hindi sinabi ng Bible, but if any man sin. The Bible says, and if any man sin. Bakit? Because it is an anticipation of God. That although ayaw niya ikaw magkasala, pero alam ng Diyos na magkasala tayo. That's why God anticipated, prepared something, amen, so that He could get rid with you, mga kapatid. Get rid not with you, with your sin, mga kapatid. <laughs> Every time you offended Him again. That's why He prepared an unlimited grace infinite grace that every time you sin grace abound grace abound grace abound grace moment by moment we sin our mind right now is even sinning amen tagal naman ang preacher na yan gutom na ako gusto ko na ano okay na naintindihan ko na we are even sinning right now but god has abounded his grace before you knew it before you recognize it before you confess it God already forgiven you. Can I tell you something also, brethren? Have that, mga kapatid, prepared. That grace. Before sin will reappear again. Just like the Lord. And lastly po, mga kapatid, use the situation to allow the Lord to conform you to the image of His Son. Pag may conflict, use that situation. Like for example, galit siya sa'yo, pero take that opportunity take that situation na maipakita mo sa kanya ang Christian character. Huwag kang magalit. Do you think ma, magalit siya sa'yo at sabi mo, hindi ako galit sa'yo, pinapatawad na kita. Pag ganun ang sasabihin mo, do you think, remember po mga kapatid, ano ang magsastrife ng anger? A soft answer, what sabi ng Bible? Turn it away, wrath. Pero pag sabihin mo, sige, you can do, you can do your worst, but know this, brother, I forgive you. Boom. You provide an opportunity kung paano, how will Jesus Christ react? When Jesus Christ was battered, when Jesus Christ was mocked, when He was ridiculed, when He was denied and rejected, amen, to the extreme, He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It is, it is an opportunity to exercise that Christian image na may ipakita to have a faithful testimony po, mga kapatid. So, so far po, mga kapatid, in closing, I have not I have said nothing about changing the offender. It's not about changing the offender. Forgiveness is not about the offender. Forgiveness is about us. Amen. We could not change if the person is lost. Wala tayong magagawa dun. But pursue na masave siya. Pursue na i-preach mo ang ibanghelyo sa kanya po mga kabadid. Now, if the person is saved po mga kabadid, kung ligtas man ang conflict natin, then we must lovingly apply po mga kapatid. Amen. 
the instruction na sinabi po ng Biblia on how we should forgive others po mga kabatid. So, if we are allowing our Lord to love Him through us, then we will be interested in changing behavior, mga kabatid. So, for, we, we understand po mga kabatid that forgiveness is not easy. Yes, we understand that. But, it is a wonderful occasion. In time of, in time of conflict, it is a wonderful occasion for the grace and the Holy Spirit to work through us. Dito mo ma-prove ang kapangyarihan ng Panginoon, ang power ng Panginoon, at ang kanyang enablement po, mga kapatid. Our Lord will never ask us to do something that we are not unable to do. He told us we should forgive others as Christ had forgiven us, mga kapatid. So you see, let's not be one-sided. And I, I, I'll close with this verse po, mga kapatid, and we're done. Okay, let's look at this. If you could not find any merit to that person or anything to that person, let's look at 2 Corinthians. I know Pastor Ben will elaborate this maybe later. But napakaganda yung pag, pag ano po, 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. Napakaganda po, mga kapatid, ang connection po ng minsahe natin ngayon at magiging minsahe mamaya. If you could not find something good or some merit or some favor from others, dahil they, were, they have so many faults po, mga kapatid, at walang favorable thing at mahirap mo siyang patawarin, anong gagawin? Verse number ano po? Look at verse number, uh, verse number 9. For to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. Verse 10. To whom forgive ye anything? To whom ye forgive anything? I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes, forgave I it in the person of Christ. Brother Don Don, if we could not forgive our spouse, makita mo palang siya, irritant na eh. Hindi naman siguro si Ternancy. Pero, look beyond her. There is Christ. Amen. If I have to forgive her, not in her name, or not of who she is, but of who Christ is, and how Christ had forgiven me. Amen. Kung Brother Johnny lang tingnan natin, mahirap patawarin. Brother Roji lang tingnan natin, mahirap patawarin. Pero if you forgive me in the person of Christ, possible ang forgiveness. And I thank God, I thank God for this morning. I hope the Lord has instructed us and talked to us po mga kabatid ngayong umaga and glory to God. Glory to God. Brother Joe or Sir Ben or whoever.